All right, this is the third recording of the day. We're starting on chapter 8.73, the latest one just completed. Uh, it's it's going to be all about Sariant Lambs and the oppression of Sariant Lambs. Guys, Sariant Lambs need your help. They are being destroyed all over the place. They need money. They need shelter. They're being hunted. It's an entirely horrible experience that they are going through. I believe in Sariant Lambs. They need your help. Go kill every single person in the world except and just murder everything and you know it needs to be done drink the kool-aid you know burn down your houses give away all your money uh piss on your children just just do it it's it needs to be done for the sariant lambs i'm just saying oh, she, what did you just the oh. fuck all right the it, it's the it's the cult of the sariant lamb let's, let's just accept that the sariant lambs have won my God, I was gonna say I, I adore Sariant lambs and think they're the best animal oh. that Tired has come up with oh, yet. Oh. But okay, man, right. oh, she's been compromised. Quick, take him down. <laughs> okay, so eight point seven three starts off with um, a pretty fucking funny scene where, which is also weirdly, I don't know what the point of it was, except for pirates to point out that Sariant lambs are probably sentient and that they needed. Some kind of breather moment after the extreme of last set, which is what I'm referring to, where Visivison and a bunch of Lucifin just enjoy themselves torturing or slash interrogating a Serent lamb. These are trying to find out who, who tried to kill Ryoka. After that, uh, what was we'll go into like what was your um, reaction to this chapter? Eight point seven three was we shifted perspective. Uh, we're on to, I believe this is the Rabbit Eater chapter, yes, I'm not stupid, yes. Um, I've lost track, we, we did a lot today. So we had the move on to Rabbit Eater, this is all about Rabbit! Um, Pirate makes a joke about fried oats because they read something, and I hate them because I mentioned eating honeyed oats in stream spoiler chat and they decided to use it. Fuck them. Fuck them all the hell. Okay. Uh, let's see. What did you guys think of the chapter? Um, for me, it was a breath of fresh air. I really appreciate. I I'm not a big fan of goblin chapters. Big surprise. Most of the goblin chapters I find a little, I don't know, too simplistic or, or too humorous, and they're or too depressing in some cases. It's just too much. It's just too much of something for me. Uh, but there are two goblins I do enjoy reading about. At least I chuckle at. One is Numb Tongue and the other is Rabbit Eater. Because Rabbit Eater generally does um, have a really fun perspective. And so does Numb Tongue. For me, just hearing about the different ways that princesses are dealing with and the kind of ethos that... Uh, uh, that makes Rabbit Eater uh, a knight was fun. All of this was just fun. And it's great to hear about. And th the biggest takeaway for me, other than it was fun, is that this fucking great general is OP. She's holding off one, two, three, four incredibly powerful people, including an Arc Mage, with access to tier nine spell level knowledge and can fuck with you. And somehow neither of them are, you know, given way and she's not losing and fuck all what we can do and we're gonna have a giant fight this fight between you know half giant lady and rabbit eater it's coming it's coming okay okay so, reactions so, from reactions from, from okay okay homunculus mute yourself okay okay uh thank you thank you for that okay uh Uh, Hush says, honestly, there is zero issue with the start of this chapter. Greg and Sarah Lambs probably did it. Yeah. Blue Juice says, Eagles watches the ASPCA commercial and laughs at Sarah McLaughlin. In the arms of the Agilum. Okay, we're... I can't do Sarah McLaughlin. I, I don't have that kind of voice. Um, I also can't sing. Hush says, Rabbit Eater should have been called Sarah Eater. Hashtag change my mind. Oshi. Oh. You're pinging so you can speak. Hey, go ahead, Blues.
please? Old man? All right, where the fuck? Okay, just ping me again if you, if you do want to speak. Asteri, you're up. Okay, uh, I would agree with you that goblin chapters can tend to be, they're not my favorite either, but I would, that's the rags chapters, not the, the numb tongue and, and rabbit eater chapters. Those are a breath of fresh air after the Ryoka chapters, dear gods. But no, the rabbit eater chapter was, was quite nice. It was great to see, um, it's always great to see his perspective. I think that he's one of the characters that, that's a really nice contrast to a lot of the Teandria, uh, a lot of the Teandria kind of thought process. And I thought it was really great to see his practicality and his, just the way that Pirate played his perspective off of the other perspectives throughout the chapter was really nice, like really great to see and really well done. And I really liked how we kind of closed out part of the chapter seeing um, other perspectives of Rabbit Eater to kind of close off his character. Okay, to continue, uh, we have commentary from um, Hush says, Asteria defend our cause, which she did not do. So clearly- I said that God, well, I defended Rabbit Eater. I, and what do you mean, it is Tiandria? No. All right, I'm going to be quiet and let Blue Juice go. Uh, yeah, Blue, go up. Unmute yourself. Can you hear me this time? Yes. That Yay. I will I will not do the Sarah McLaughlin thing either. But you I did like that. You can do the voice. I can't. In the arms of a gentleman, fly away from here. Okay, stop. Go, go, go. On uh, just an overall thoughts of the, um, I did think that the most interesting thing to me was the way that he had detail, or that Rabbit has details of Lionette's life that are so un, they don't sync up with with how her siblings feel about her or know her to be. That the descriptions that are coming from uh, about the the princesses, the entire thing, uh, of the entire time do ne never really make rabbit consider that he might know a princess because in his mind he does not associate the lioness that we know with princess like behavior but then he kind of throws that back in the other princess's face to say like she's higher level than you so maybe she's got the right idea about what a princess is get over yourselves and i think that's probably my favorite part of the chapter that and the fact that he's like uh it's like oh yes i know her she has a mercia and they have no idea what the context of that is. And that just, it, it just, that is really delightful, I thought. I love the fact that we just kind of jump right past that event, too. He's Rabbit Eater and the, and the, and the whole, like, setup. And <laughs> in order to mute himself, Lou left the channel. So that was hilarious. But he, that, that we skip right past the fact that Rabbit Eater has now connected the fact that Leonette was in. The uh, is in an inn in Israel and has a has a little daughter and was serving food, and we just skip right past that. We, we, no one, no reaction, no nothing. The princesses didn't even absorb that. We skip right past it. If at some point in the future we do not have Leonette contacting her sister slash rabbit eater, I will have a because this it's enough. You gotta you gotta give me you gotta give me that juicy scene, uh, Mr. Wiggles. You're up. Okay, so I I will uh I will defend the cause, hush. All all uh all Thank you. All goblin chapters are amazing, okay? All of them. No matter what. First of all, so yes, I love this chapter. It was great. Uh I think Rabbit Eater it has now been tied with my favorite goblin of all time, Rags, who is great, Hysteria. Come on. Um but yeah, I I, I definitely really enjoyed the chapter. It was just great all around like starting out with the sarient land lamp mafia uh getting questioned was just hilarious to to see at the very start and then getting to know the princesses as we uh uh through rabbit eaters eyes was all, also really well done and very depressing like honestly i all of them are excessively depressing to me i don't like it 
they, they got to be better, like for having either sessions. <laughs> like, good lord. Um, but overall, it was just a great chapter, and yeah, I liked it. I liked, yeah, I'm of that same opinion. It was a great chapter. It was very focused. Uh, Mr. Europe says, Rabbit Eater is always fun. Exploiting mentally honor is always fun. This chapter was fun. Hush, my ears have been slandered with anti-goblin lies. Who doesn't appreciate an oppressed people rising up? Hashtag rags forever. Okay. Metamir says, it was a very fun chapter. The teasing with the Leonette connection reveal was great. The misunderstandings, the realizations, Rabbit Eater's, honor Rabbit Eater's honorable stand, everything was great. Lord Panther says, considering Rabbit Eater is a champion, I was expecting him to pull a Mars in calling out the opposing other army's champion. I suppose that's a skill he will earn from one of his upcoming levels, probably after his coming fight against the half-giant general. Assuming he doesn't die or get beaten down and then somebody has to save his ass. Hush says Talia x Rabbit Eater or Rabbit Eater x Misa should be the next plot point. No, I'm with Rabbit Eater slash or x Seraphel, but yeah, do what you want. Mel says, Pirate Abba trolled us so much with the Rabbit Eater not finding out the GTH, 8th, I think that is, Princess's name. Overall, love this chapter. It was a needed breath of fresh air after Ryoko. I, I agree very much. Rabbit Eater needed, needs to enter a cage boxing tournament. I agree with Oshi. We need a lo lion talks to her sister scene. I made a pact with the dragon. What have you done? Syria in reaction to... Oh, I'm talking about the, the juicy drama. No, Assyria, I don't mean the firefighter intro scene. Um, Assyria in response to Lord Panther's comment about Rabbit Eater at his champion level says he has to counter level to be able to face them first. Uh, Blue Juice is says second best part in the chapter, Rabbit booing Tyrion and hoping he gets hit and being jealous he's got a cool magic banner. Goblins need a cool magic banner. Meanwhile, all his friends are like, what the fuck, Rabbit? H Hush says, yeah, that's defo up there with the sit Orient lamb truth-finding investigation. Asteria says, I just lo kind of love how some characters have their own mental errand. Pisces and Rabbit. Yup. Yeah, that's what... Okay. This is going to be a little bit of a hot take, but out of every character, Aaron has, I think, the most motherly sisterly like un unintentionally deep relationship with two characters in particular not including not even relk or kill or anything it's rabbit eater because she genuinely sees him as 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 her people and she really wants him to be greater and better and she just loves him as a person in a way that i don't think gets recognized enough except Maybe when we see Rabbit Eater's point of view, because Aaron, we don't see enough inside of Aaron's head. Let's be real. We we like to think we do. We don't. Um, then on the other hand, the the second one is well, I'll keep to myself because that's a hot take that we don't need to talk about. Hush says like a puddle, but it drowns you. I don't know what that's referring to, but sure, sure. Uh, a serious is numb tongue. No, it, it's not. Numb tongue? Not not what I'm thinking of. Metamir says they are really setting Aaron up to be a new religion. WWED, what would Aaron do? Blue Juice says, are we glossing over the fact Sarant Lambs actually do have a conspiracy and did poison a regent to death? No, I just refuse to uh, let our soon-to-be overlords be slandered by such horrific rumor mongering by jealous and dare I say it? Truly evil people. Just accept the truth of the Sariot Lamb and just um drink this uh drink. Don't 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 worry. It has a slight bitter aftertaste. Don't worry about it. Blue juice. Hush in response to that says, Yeah, I'm starting to think well, Lakin has been taken for a ride there. Um Mr. Europe says Aaron is the most motherly character, and she's also the one with the most people romantically interested in her. These are facts. Pat says, I think it's very fitting that Rabbit Eater asked what Aaron would do and then immediately went out to get shot by Grape. That is the thing, 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to get to some questions, because uh, unless anybody has any. Uh, yeah, I would even get to get my cross. My cross. Oh, she, you're cutting out. Sorry, I'm just giggling, and um, it's not picking up because Discord doesn't do that. Okay, okay, and I would like to point out, even though it's semantics, it's more what Aaron would say for him to do rather than go out and do herself. And yes, he did dodge them. So okay. that's... Hang on a second. We don't know that Aaron would have gone out there with the white flag and, and you know... Tried I mean, but he and... specifically says he corrects himself instead of what she would do, what she would say to do. I'm just oh. pointing, pointing oh, that yeah. out. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, why is... Question number one. Oh, we're not okay. Whoever wrote this, I've already. I will read this, but we don't want to tell people too much. Well, with the Light Herald dead, does Calfer have any of free the Serrant lands? Long live the revolution! Down with the bourgeois! Long live the lamb! And we're done. Number two. Does Calfer have a hope of becoming relevant regarding combat in the war after the death? Slash injury of the Light Herald. Mr. Yurk? Uh, I mean, it's just what it says on tin. They've been. Can, what is your opinion? Do you think they. they do you think it, that they do? I don't, really. Uh, <laughs> the only one they have that's competent uh, like uh, in violence is Leon at, the, Leon at this point. They, they've been hyping up, like they've been saying forever, like, oh, we're not really very good at this, but like, this is not our forte, but uh, we we do have this like light herald, and the, like the main forces have been, like the elites have been staying back a bit. And now he comes out and he gets uh, like beaten to death in such a gruesome fashion that it's not even allowed to be seen on screen. Uh, it's they it, i think this is the final nail in the coffin that they're never going to be relevant in a, a military fashion uh, mr riggle says vive la revolution and lots of exclamation points and um a lamb emoji or sheep emoji excuse me lord panther any hope that califer had of mattering militarily disappeared with the loss of the light herald arch says light herald more like squashed herald kylera you have a comment yeah, I think that, um, I mean, they're just not up against the enemies that they're good against. I was rereading a chapter the other day, and Lionette was talking about how they can use their, they have light auras. They use if they fight ghosts, but that's not what they're up against. I do think the one thing they have that a lot of the other Night Orders don't is that um, they've definitely demonstrated they're willing to die, and that tends to get you a few superpowered people in InWorld. A lot of the other night orders, you know, Rabbit Eater has pointed this out with the Order of Seasons, right? They'll sit out a fight if they don't think they can win. Or they will, you know, surrender, things like that, that, um, you know, the, the throne bearers are out there dying by the hundreds and they know it. So there will be a few that, you know, they'll be able to replace the Light Herald, assuming they get the armor back. Yeah. And and tie into that, Blue Juice comments, I asked this in the wrong channel, but is there a non-zero zero chance Rabbit will be the next Light Herald for saving three princesses of Calamar and holding the past of their queen? Also, knowing he's a null and wouldn't really be a knight, will they wrongly assume Lion Knighted her? Good questions all around. Possibilities. I, I have no commentary on this. For their military significance, they spent a lot of time fucking with people, and they're part of an alliance for a reason. They depended on the Dawn Concordant itself to protect them, and the particular geographic defenses they have. But you're right, they have allowed their military to, to ossify quite a bit. Mr. Wiggles, you're up. I think the only way they could actually become someone of a military power and this kind of war at this point is doing what Olusum did with the Antinium and purposefully um, purposely sending them in to try and get them to counter level as much as possible. And from what we've heard so far, the throne bearers, which should be like their 
the backbone of their military might in a lot of ways just aren't willing to commit themselves so i'm not sure if i'm i'm not um optimistic i should say about them ever being a very large military presence in this conflict simply because it doesn't seem like they're willing to uh do what they need to do okay do you have a comment Yeah, I think the only way they can actually hold is, pr is if the, the princesses walk out with them in a similar situation as the sacrifice of roses. Because otherwise, as it's demonstrated, pretty much all the knight orders they have very low morals when it comes to the ease of surrendering, which does work in, against them, especially in, in grinding battles and counter leveling. Okay. Lara? Uh, oh. I actually think that's probably the best idea. Actually, now you said it, just because. They've got, the throne bearers have a lot of anti-assassination skills and things like that that allow them to retaliate against people that attack the princesses. And so doing it on purpose might actually let them use a lot of the skills that they can't normally on the battlefield. Especially because if you create, like, there are two things that make me think that this is probably the solution, at least partially, that will end up happening, is the, is... Seraphel will sally forth and try to rally the troops for herself. The there needs to be a symbol, like pirates setting it up, that there needs to be a symbol. Part of what is allowing them to stay in the fight is standing up for themselves. And there it really isn't anything like that. And Rabbit just went out and demonstrated what happens when you put yourself forward. They and he gave gives her the, his thesis statement. Do something. Like she's sitting back. Do something. She can ask herself what all she wants. But this is why I kind of want her to have a conversation with Leonette because Leonette did something. Girl, she went out and did something. So why not? Why can't they? And what other choice do they have? Is their life worth so much if they hate themselves? If they want? If they really think they aren't useful? Well, here's a chance. To change that, put yourself at risk. Um, uh, Hush says, secondly, Seraphel's skills work on undead, so a grinder of death and counter leveling would work in her favor. Maybe we don't even know. Uh, Sears says, what is stopping the other knights from challenging the opposing knights from those one on ones just to stop the mess attacking? Because I would expect most of the knights are like Talia was when the initial siege attack was coming up. They didn't want to risk themselves in that situation, and they truly did believe that they would be killed. They could surrender and leave. They're not invested. That's the thing. That's what Rabbit de demonstrated. There is no one invested. They're stuck on their rules, their systems, their chivalry, the way they do the wars. So there's a the, so they think about war differently, and that's that's stymieing them. It isn't just a weakness for. Aelin Damis, it's also a weakness for Kalimfar and for all of the Don Concordant in, in general. Now, um, before I move on, okay, the, this question from Mel has essentially been answered, um, but I'll, I'll address it. Mel asks, what is wrong with the political structure with Kalimfar that prevented their military from preparing sufficiently for this war? It has been clear for many years that a war was coming. But they seem to be caught flat-footed. The royal family seems to be incompetent in military matters. That's why we got the ghost scene earlier on. The stratifying of power into non-military hands, structures being diplomatic in nature rather than military. It was a deliberate choice on Cal for Cal. And it makes sense why they did it. Um, now, the fortress with the glass ceiling, that's Caliph. That, that's literally a different kingdom. I still think that the fact that it happened is the stupidest thing ever, because how the fuck did they change a major fortress's physical structure without approval from the military commander, which is the queen of Khalif, the Griffin Queen? What the fuck happened there? Blue Juice says... She, I, just let me really respond to that real quickly, Oshi. I, I was questioning that too, but I think it comes down to the fact that the queen doesn't seem to have the best 
handle or control entirely over her realm and seems to be a little bit more hands off. And you also have to remember that there's probably about, like she's probably really concerned with the Griffin Prince and her other offspring uh, to be managing every little fort change. And I'm sure they're, the Princess of Kalanfer having that, that diplomatic tie, she also probably gets a lot more leeway for making those decisions. And Bleachers asked if, what I was going to talk about. Uh, would we have been introduced to the Queen and Terry's dragon connection in this chapter if there wasn't a possibility of their relevance in the defense of the kingdom? The only other Tarandrian ghost we met introduced the bow artifact. This had no immediate impact on the chapter. Could we find out why Seraphel hides out in Castle Crypts? Did she see ghosts like Terry mentioned? I honestly think that whatever the next fight is, that is when Terry's dragon connection will come back and will convince will either kill Eldavin, convince Eldavin actually no, I'm just going with kill Eldavin. I'm hoping it kills Eldavin. Um, because I want Terry back. And the Queen connection, the Queen's ghost, that's how she's going to help the battle. Not necessarily win, but maybe create a stalemate situation. Um, I don't know how, but it, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Kylera says, not if it's a live, live-in estate, which it sounds like it. This is probably in response to Asteria. Not if it's a live-in estate, which it sounds like it is. That would likely be owned the, by the local lord who apparently approved the project. Okay but then they wouldn't have fortress keepers and a military command. Hush says, guys, it's time for the Eldavin getting long-range smacked by Nears with his no-magic skill through the Skying Room. Bitch, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Um, although that would be a little too obvious. All right, we're going to wrap things up because it's been two hours and I've done three things and we're going to keep going afterwards. Uh, the stream is active for the next chapter, so if you want to go hang out there too, it, it's time to go. Last question, what is the next food to be discussed since we just did oats? Mel, fuck you, first, and then two, go ahead, What? So what's the next food, Mel? What do you think it's going to be? Watermelon. Why watermelon? First thing that came to my mind. And summer that. is uh, around the corner. I can go with some watermelon. It's still spring. What do you mean summer is around? It hasn't even become spring yet. It's March. I'm already thinking about 2023. Oh, fuck. We don't even know what season it is in, in world at the moment. So you have it's to think we're headed world. to, well, whatever it is. We're headed to Balareros probably, right? After Teandria. So Balareros would be jungles, would be... Chocolate. Coffee. We already have chocolate. That's it's not new food, Ochi. New food. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks everybody. Actually, you know what? It's gonna be whatever Folion is eating. I bet Folion is gonna be eating something new. So So we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna try again. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, I hope you'll join again. We're we're trying to develop past this. I hope we need more volunteers to host, to become friendly hosts. I know it seems like we're doing a lot. It it's not. It really usually isn't this much. Pirate just swamped all of us with their seven day a week thing. Not bad, Pirate. Uh, thanks, everybody, again. Thanks, everybody, for coming. We're going to 